Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me on today's live stream. I hope we are live. Hello. Uh, Danny, We're live. Bangkok, and I'm in Bali, so you'll hear either traffic or roosters. That's one or the other. Uh, you'll know where it's coming from. Okay. Um, if you guys are here joining us for today's live stream, it is actually the first live stream I'm doing with an interview guest. So if there's any glitches on what happens today, please for forgive us. But um, we're going to have a fun conversation today. And if you are here, please say hello. Carolyn's here. Hi, Carolyn. She's from our Hi, 90 Carolyn. Group, which is awesome. She's always the first into these uh, live streams, which is great. Um, so before I introduce uh, Danny and what we're gonna be talking about today, uh, if you guys are joining me here on uh, the live stream, please introduce yourselves, tell us where you're from, uh, tell us what you do and what you're most excited to learn uh, today about overcoming burnout or uh, finding a different version of success that doesn't have you sacrificing your wellness and your health. Uh, whatever questions you have, we will be reading the live comments. I'm not sure if Danny can see them, but I can see them and I can always let him know. Um, so the first thing is if you guys are joining me for the first time and you don't know who the hell I am, I should probably introduce myself. So uh, I'm Lydia Lee. I'm the founder and corporate escape coach at Screw the Cubicle. Uh, and my main mission is to help talented professionals repurpose their skills and their experience uh, into a meaningful business so that they can live a life of freedom uh, and have more independent choices and freedom of choice really in your life uh, without having to conform to vacation request forms and your boss's uh, whim. Uh, that's sort of my mission. Um, so what I do here at Screw the Cubicle is I love telling stories of real people, ordinary people doing big things in the world, uh, because we want to be able to relate to people. You know, we want to be able to say, hey, it's not just someone that is um, an entrepreneur for 10, 15, 20 years, but actually people who started from scratch, you know, didn't start, uh, started as a grassroots entrepreneur. And I love sharing those stories about how they got started and what they overcame uh, to get to the success version of where they're at today. Uh, so today's uh, guest and our first episode Ever guest for our live stream for Screw the Cubicle. Danny, the uh, past retreat experience um, graduate, if you will, from the last April retreat I ran this year. He's also a member of my newest program called the 90 Day Launch Program. But what I really love uh, sharing about Danny's stories, because I'll, I won't ruin the story and I'll let him sort of talk about it here, uh, but I really love the fact that. First of all, he's energetic, and so the fact that he's named Bunny uh, is a really, really great thing. He's definitely an energizer bunny. Uh, you'll hear it in a minute. Uh, but I also love how supportive he is to brand new entrepreneurs that really want to make something of themselves into the world. And his story is such a great raw experience of advice of how he turned a really painful experience of anxiety, burnout, and depression in order to get to the level of success that he's at today. So thank you so very much, Danny, for joining me. You're welcome. I'm very, I'm very Um, Lydia, I see you around. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Yay. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Tech issues. I already said that in the yeah. beginning. All right. So, um, Danny, tell us a little bit more about what you do now. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then we'll go into the story of what happened to you in New York five years ago. Okay, so um, a little introduction about myself. I call myself a serial entrepreneur. So serial being like the breakfast cereal. So the reason why I call myself that is because, yes, I do a lot of things and I start a lot of businesses. The only difference is that I only start something if it scratches an itch or if it fills me up and if I'm really excited about it. Um, and I believe that when we approach life and business this way, um, the money part of the business and life will sort itself out. So I'm a serial entrepreneur and um, basically I do a lot of things. I'm on in online publishing, I do web and app development, I do panoramic imaging, I do brand identity creation. Um, and uh, now I'm in the midst of starting JennyBunny.co, which is to um, encourage other people to come out and uh, you know, start their own businesses and to uh, live life on their own terms. I'm writing an ebook right now. I'm creating my first ever epic online program. Uh, so I'm doing many, many things, but I, right. I'm also taking good care of myself. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I hope that answers your questions about what I do. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, to start that way for you, I mean, you, you were never, I mean, I don't know if you had entrepreneurs or anything in your family, but you are quite a, a great self-starter. And uh, you got, I mean, you've been an entrepreneur for how many years now? 
I would say that I kind of started my first web design a business when I was 29th turning 30 and mm -hmm. I'm 42 this year so it has been 12 years I can't remember <laughs> you told me that at the retreat I was like what magic detail <laughs> are you uh, taking but anyways working for you um, <laughs> And, and I, w I would love for you to share, you know, one of the things that I was really moved by when you shared the story about yourself is a lot of what we did at the retreat uh, is talking a lot about how your story, right, leads you to meaningful work that you want to do and how your story led you to the work that you want to do now, which is empowering, you know, a lot of, so very similar to what I do as well, empowering a lot of people to start their own business, uh, to really do something meaningful with their lives. Uh, it really started from this really painful experience and you shared that with us in the retreat, which are now, you know, sort of, um, I got it how that linkage happened now. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur and I just want to make other entrepreneurs happen in the world. It was really the way that of how you're going to want to help entrepreneurs get to success is a bit different than the sort of hustle, hustle mentality and sort of get uh, rich quick, you know, sort of uh, mentality that you're not an advocate for. But it really came from an experience that you had. Uh, so, you know, not everyone obviously tell us a little bit about how that started for you that five year ago journey when you had that epic meltdown that mm -hmm. changed the course of how you run your businesses and how you even develop businesses these days okay so um really uh, my meltdown was in new york five years ago and uh, i'm we're coming up to the fifth anniversary and i'm going to like celebrate it um and um well i think the strange thing is that you know when you hear when you hear about people having a meltdown it's probably because they were very stressed or they were very unhappy and they have like prolonged depression and then it just culminates into this big explosion so for me mm. the same thing happened except that it wasn't because my life was meaningless or i was depressed in fact i probably had too much of a good thing happening in my life i mean i was doing a lot of work that was meaningful i felt very connected to my work money was coming in um i was getting recognition and we were winning awards and you know mm -hmm. I, I had a very good family and i i'm surrounded by a lot of good friends so then it's very strange why is it that i had a meltdown so when mm -hmm. i had a, a meltdown in new york it wasn't for work it was actually i was on vacation and i was actually in new york to watch madonna and i ended up watching her in yankee stadium i only watched two of the first songs that she performed and i fell asleep for the entire concert can you imagine like a high impact oh, Madonna concert yeah it's like high impact madonna concert and i fell asleep and when i woke up i mean like there were like tens and thousands of people in yankee stadium and you know i was so overwhelmed by the number of people and then i had waves and waves of anxiety attack but it kind of like built from there like small anxiety attack to mid-sized anxiety attack to like big size anxiety attacks and then what happened was in my third day when I was in New York and I was actually um, having fun in Guggenheim Museum, that was when everything mm -hmm. came crumbling down and I blacked out and I had to be sent back on an emergency flight. I had to be packed back all the way from New York to Singapore. And then I was out of action for six months. And um, mm -hmm. I won't go into the details, but the, the medical diagnosis was mind-body disassociation. So essentially my mind separated itself from the body and the reason wow. why that happened is you have to imagine it's it's just um very similar to when your computer is in a sleep mode um so it's like the computer couldn't cope with all that's going so it was trying to stay alive but with minimal resources so what it did was it says okay cool then it's kind of overworked overstressed and too much is going on and can't handle it so let's shut down his body and let's just keep the brain mm. slightly alive so the only message that I retained um, during um, New York when the meltdown happened was my friends who were with me, one of whom was a doctor. He said that I was just chanting this mantra. And this mantra was basically, I, I spoke in Chinese and I said, wei hui jia, wei hui jia, wei hui jia. and I was literally begging everyone, anyone, strangers and just friends. Of course, I didn't know what was happening. To me, it was just a blackout. But I was begging and I said, wei hui jia, wei hui jia. and that essentially meant I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. So when I checked this with my doctor later, he said that the reason why I said that was because the brain decided to just keep that one message that will kind of bring me home to safety and comfort. And that's why um, I have to give what my brain decided it wants. And if I had this prolonged period whereby I still wasn't home, then I would really go cuckoo. 
Mm. Yeah. So so then what happened was when I came back to Singapore, um, I spent half a year a uh, half a year recalibrating. I was on medication. I was on psychotherapy three times a week, um, and um, I had to see a doctor and I had to disconnect. I couldn't work, and the situation was quite dire because I lost my motor skills. Um, I couldn't really talk very well. I was slurring. Wow. And um, I was just um, always very anxious and always crying. Um, and then also the worst was I became incontinent. I couldn't even control my peeing. So I was just wetting my bed. So you can wow. imagine how, how desperate the situation was. Like, you know, basically my body decided to just let go. And at that point mm -hmm. in time, it was freaking hell scary because I thought that was it. That was the end of me. And then what was, what was all this hustling for and what was all this success for? Because now I can't even pee when I want to. Um, so that was how extreme it was. And that was my basically my meltdown episode. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and, and at, at the pinnacle of your success as well, right? Because sometimes you think about meltdowns and anxiety help it happening when, uh, you know, we don't have money or we're broke or we're, you know, chasing after a job that we can't have or whatever, right? Something about lacking, right, in mm -hmm. our lives. And what was lacking for you was this health and well-being, right? That was um, not in that version or formula that you knew how to get success. So what did you learn trying to get back your motor skills again, which is such a scary experience to have, uh, what did you learn about your success? Did you go back and go, holy shit, like, although I made all this money, I did it in a way that just wasn't healthy. Like, what was some of the nuggets of, of learnings that you received from that painful experience? Well, I think, uh, like I said, it's so interesting that I had a meltdown when I thought I had everything going in my life. So mm -hmm. the very, very first big lesson that uh, I learned when I was going through the psychotherapy with my therapist um, and now friend is that I realized that, oh my God, Dan, you have not been taking care of yourself at all. You know, you have no boundaries. There was no self-care. There was no self-love. And all you did was to define success as getting more, 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 doing more, 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 even if it lights you up. So what essentially happened was that I um, put a lot of effort and I allocated a lot, if not all of my resources into just doing so none of the resources went into taking care of myself, learning how to say no, setting up boundaries, being more selective about what I choose to do or not. And I'm by nature a very giving and generous person with my time and my resources and my energy and my love. So what I do is I end up trying to solve not just my own issues and problems and challenges in my life, but I love to help other people. And it is too true right now. I mean, I have a lot of love to give and I always want to be there for my family, friends, even strangers. So I always, you know, when, Whenever someone comes to me with an issue or a problem, I just want to help. So the, the flip side of that is I end up running myself dry and the energizer bunny, bunny energizer batteries in me is just dry. And I never really think about recharging it, you know, a little sleep when I uh, meet 30s, sleep was like it was a waste of time. I didn't have time for sleep. I didn't want to sleep because I felt so frustrated. I can't, I can't wait to just wake up, you know, and have minimal sleep and then start the day again. Um, mm. And yeah, so basically the, the biggest lesson was that there was a total lack of self-care and self-love. Um, mm. And that, um, you know, I, I feel that um, the biggest aha moment I had later was that I have to then decide in my life that how much is enough then because if we don't decide how much is enough in our life then we are always going to want more to and more and it's just the way we are wired you know um and it's our natural tendency so now my thing is after i've decided how much is enough then i realize that enough is plenty there is so much and enough and then that's when you realize that you don't need to hustle any more than you 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 need right now and everything else is a bonus and you can really kind of sit back and really relax and really enjoy the process instead of always rushing to a destination that may or may not happen yeah absolutely and i know one of the things that you mentioned was when you did end up being uh transparent about the story because obviously you know it's, it's it's not something you share publicly right away like the fact that you said i've been wetting the bed like that's not something you sort of say it and we're saying it now publicly which is great uh but you know at the time it was scary for you to reveal that because you know I, and i have the same fear sometimes of of um you know admitting about you know high, high functioning depression that happens so much in entrepreneurship and it happens so much in 
um, you know, lots of successful people's lives, you know, where we don't talk about these, um, you know, taboo uh, topics uh, for successful people because we're like, everyone looks up to us for advice, yes. you know, everyone, uh, puts us on this pedestal of success and you on the outside in the naked eye looked like you had everything. So when you started to tell people about what happened, um, what was your reaction that came from the people that heard your story? Well, it was very, very, very illuminating and interesting. I mean, yes, so I'm outwardly, um, externally, and people think that I'm a successful person. And here's the thing about success and achievement, right? I mean, there is so much about sharing the not good side of businesses, um, but very few people actually share the the, the, the untold stories and the, the the dirty side of business, right? But for me, because I'm naturally wired to be a very transparent and authentic person, I'm very, very honest. So, you know, if it's good, I say I'm good. If it's bad, I will just say, you know, this is bad. So basically what happened was part of my diet to recover when I was um, away for half a year, half a year was that I should not touch social media. I cannot touch my business periodicals. I can do no work. Um, and all I did was just to batch and rest and watch a shitload of TV. That's all I did. So basically, I, I, I disappeared and I vanished from the surface of the earth. And I was very active on social media. So when I disappeared, um, I think my presence was, my, my lack of presence was felt. But when I re-emerged from my bunny cave, um, I was like, hi guys, you know, mm. and then people were like, oh my God, Dan, where were you? Because during my recuperation period, um, I didn't tell people what happened. In fact, um, I kind of also hid the entire story away from my mom and my grandmother because I didn't want to worry them. And I wanted to fix myself first, you know, and I gave myself that space to fix myself. So when I came out um, of my bunny cave and I shared my story about what happened because my friend asked me, so I had to tell them what happened. So I told them my story, just trying to be honest, but not trying to like inspire people or motivate people. But what happened then was then people started getting in touch with me, like private messaging me, sending me direct messages, calling me. And we have mm. prolonged conversations about stress. And they were asking me for my doctor's number. They were asking if the medication worked. They were asking like, um, you know, does psychotherapy even work? What do you do in a psychotherapy session? I mean, Dan, so I said, well, I draw circles, you know, sometimes. And they're like, oh my God, drawing circles work. I mean, what is this woo-woo thing? But yeah. um, I, I shared with them wholeheartedly about how I trusted the process. And I think I'm like a walking billboard, you know. Now, disclaimer, I'm able to control my peeing, you know, and I'm not right. slurring anymore, I hope. And, right. you know, I yeah, so they saw the recovery in me and, you know, so then... Mm -hmm. These friends, and these are high flyer friends. I mean, they are like CEOs. Some of the companies have even gone IPO. So they are what you call high functioning people. And right. what was so alarming was then they told me that they are unhappy, they are depressed, they are so stressed out, they are burning out. And um, there, there was someone who even told me like, you know, Dan, um, just last week when I was crossing the road, I wanted to just end it there. You know, mm. and I had a, a friend who is in the educational sector, very, very stressful, telling me like, you know, Dan, um, I don't know how to be happy. And I think the problem is I feel like I don't deserve to be happy at all. So these mm. all added up. And I'm not talking about one or two isolated cases. This is just my friends. And I could count them with like more than, you know, I can't count them with two hands. There's so many. Yeah. So that was so yeah. alarming because when I, I thought my friends, uh, and probably they thought I was too, you know, we were like, we had everything down pat. You know, we are so successful. That's we had so it all so together. Wonderful. Just everything lined up in terms of yes. Version. yes, like we have this clear eyed vision of where we want to be, and we are right there right now. We have everything we've got the house, we've got the car, we've got the family, we've got beautiful kids, we've got a great job, we've got a great title, you know, we are well known, we've got the awards. But a lot of these people are still running on empty because they, they chase something that the society promised that will give them the happiness and the sense of achievement and success. But when it got there, this, they're there and they're feeling empty and they're going, they're going like, what is this? I don't understand. So, so what did I sign that, up for? Yeah, what did I sign up for? And then they realize that this whole thing is the fluke. This whole system that I've been sold, it doesn't work. Mm. When you eventually get there, if you're lucky enough to get there, you're in life trying to get there, probably never will. And then they think, oh, you know, when I get to the end of the rainbow, I'm going to see this whole pot of gold. But 
mm-hmm, no, you know, if you don't get your, if you don't kind of like put the horse ahead of the cart, that's what I like to say, then you're going to realize that you're going to get nowhere. So that's what I discovered um, about um, my friends and it was so alarming. And that's why I feel so called to do the work that I'm going to embark on in the near future because I feel that this is a big migraine problem that I feel like I want to help solve now. Mm, I love that. I, and I think a lot of the, the most meaningful business ideas come from a pain that we've experienced because mm. by, by overcoming it, and, and it was painful for you to overcome that, it's like many years of dealing with that, right? Um, sometimes lead us to want to actually contribute to the thing that we just suffered with because we don't want other people to go through that. You know, you, we want to be a messenger of this a particular topic that doesn't, uh, you know, that, that it's not taboo anymore, you know, that it is transparent, you're a walking example, right, of what can happen after a painful experience, because in every breakdown, there is a breakthrough, you know, and I really know this, because I myself, you know, you, you and I have very similar stories, in a sense, uh, where I had my meltdown in Russia, and had to see a therapist, and I didn't draw any circles as part of my therapy program, but I definitely did have to re- look at what decisions I was making in my life, because I think it's so easy as, as you know, day to day happenings in our life to just co- sort of just keep going. And, you know, we, 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 you know, graduate from high school, we go to university, we hope that we pick a degree that is somewhat useful. We do the internships, we climb that corporate ladder. And then when we get up there, the view isn't what we're expecting because we were just doing what we thought we were supposed to do. That were these rules and guidelines and this trajectory of success, but actually not once that we take a pause to actually go, is this version of success really my own or has it been passed down from my mom, my ama, your grandma, right? Your yeah. society, your teachers, your mentors, like whoever those people really do affect what you believe your version is. So that was your pause moment, isn't it? That breakdown is your pause moment to go wake up and have your own definition of what success is. Um, so mm-hmm. I'm really curious to know, um, like from that that breakdown and what you discovered about what really healthy success should be, what has now, how has that led you to create this personal brand? Because when you first came, like we, when we first got on a call for you to come to Bali, I was sort of in a way, in, a, in the beginning, confused because I was like, you started, you're a serial entrepreneur. Why are you coming here to start a business with me if you actually already know how to start a business? Um, but this business is different. And, and how is this personal brand different from your other businesses? And why did you think, uh, you know, be, starting from scratch again from this business will help you? Right. OK, so so the thing is, I'm a lifelong learner and I always believe that there is uh, no end to learning. Right. So even though I am like a lot of things that I can learn from anyone the teacher appears right so you appeared in my life when i was ready to do the denny bunny but before denny bunny i actually started this thing called the happy academy on Mm. my own so basically it was like a school to teach people how to be happy because I, i i thought that this um, was sorely missing in our educational system. And I just want to do some bunny intervention. You know, I just want to come up with this school and teach people how to be happy. And then that was when, uh, that was the end of 2016. And then going into 2017 this year, uh, I decided to clear my entire working schedule to create time and space for me to, um, you know, just go after my play and passion projects. So I decided, okay, this is the year where I'm not going to take on any commercial projects and I'm going to work on Happy Academy. So what happened was then I was very um, honored to be invited to give a a speech at the National Design Center. And then the organizer actually was a friend of yours. And after we became friends with with, Yeah, who, 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 she shared for the Yonix Big Thing retreat, my Facebook feed. So I clicked on it and then, you know, and then I started sleuthing on you. And then I was like, just checking out all the videos that you have done. And I was like, wow, who is this cute little Asian lady with so much energy and so effervescent and is teaching so much wisdom. And I got very drawn to what you were teaching and the message behind that. And then um, I was also not just learning um, about the things that you shared. I was also learning about the way you were doing it. And it really um, um, kind of like um, vibed with me, you know, and 
I, I want to be like a Lydia Lee. You know, I was like, yes, this is exactly what I'm going to do. I want to teach people. I want to share the love. I want to put out a strong, healthy message. You know, right. I want to reach out to many people online. So then um, when the opportunity came uh, to do the retreat, so the thing is, um, personally, because I now know how to practice self-care and self-love, what I do is every three to four months, I do this thing called the thinking retreat. So Ooh. I'm actually in the midst of a thinking retreat right now. I'm in Bangkok, in my Bangkok home and not in Singapore. Uh, but uh, what is it? It's, it's August now, right? So we did our retreat in April. So that was four months ago, right? Mm -hmm. So four months ago, when I saw that post of your next big thing on my Facebook feed, that was about the time when I was supposed to do a retreat anyway. Right. So I thought that, you know, I for 2017, I want to do something new each year. I want to get out of my comfort zone. I want to push myself. I want to um, explore and just experiment. So I've never been to a retreat at all before, before your next. And I thought, okay, what the hell not, you know, just go. So I went with the flow and I did the Your Next Big Thing retreat. And oh my God, it's just the best thing. I mean, the year hasn't ended. So I'm happy. I might say this early, but I think it's the best thing that has ever happened in 2017. It, I got my, that, that entire experience. Um, I went with terms of what I wanted. I wanted clarity um, and mm -hmm. um, I wanted to see how you did it because eventually I want to run my own retreats and I wanted to see if, you know, um, does this format really even work? You know, like getting strangers from all over the world, you know, put them into a like intensive camp for a, a week long program. Does it even yes. work? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I was there and yes, it worked. So I, I got a lot of clarity and then I pivoted from Happy Academy to Danny Bunny and I decided to build a personal brand instead. I got that clarity out of that retreat. I went mm. in having a lot of, um, I know the general direction I wanted to go, but I also had a lot of questions about how I'm going to execute like specifically. And I think that the entrepreneurial journey can be quite lonely sometimes. It really depends on whether you have a lot of entrepreneurial friends. So yeah. for me, um, there aren't a lot of people that I can share or like, you know, I want to knock ideas around with. So when I went to your next big thing, what I did was I had this council of people that I felt really safe about sharing my ideas or my doubts or my roadblocks. And I had every knot untied um, that I brought there with when I went there with, you know, and they were all untied. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a very, very amazing experience. Yeah. So what has it been? Because I know when you first came, you had a vague idea about where you you want to go and you knew you had something ready to be birthed but you're not sure what just yet um and what's happened since we're now in august and april was you know a few months back what has happened since the retreat for you that you're excited to start and what have you you know discovered about your new business idea now Right. So right after the Your Next Big Thing uh, retreat ended, I remember I was so sad on the last day because I was like, oh my God, I want to bring this whole experience with me and prolong it, you know, well, where are we going to go now? So I was literally begging um, Lydia, we, I was in a pool with you, right, on our R&R &R day. And I was like, please, please do a part two or do something so that we can join, you know, don't, don't just leave us now. You know, yeah. so uh, what I got so excited about was then um, you came up with the 90 day launch plan, which just fit perfectly in terms of timeline and what I was doing. And I really wanted that support and guidance to continue. So I'm in the midst of the 90 day launch program with you right now. Um, and um, I am uh, actively and um, uh, aggressively taking action every week, at, but there's, there's like a sequence that we're doing. So I'm basically rolling out dannybunny.co. Um, right after the Yonix Big Thing retreat, I came back and I redid my, reworked my website uh, with a new clear direction. I'm just generating content right now. I um, started off my mailing list and generating weekly newsletters. Um, what else? Uh, and also, uh, I'm working on my online program, which will be coming out end of this year. Um, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning, oh God, I love that. <laughs> and I'm beginning to uh, edit the um, first draft of the ebook that I've written about my meltdown. Like, you know, I go into re real details and, and the lessons that I've extracted out of the entire painful experience. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am right now. I'm, and I'm very excited. And I can't believe how fast the year has gone by you know oh, i mean I've, I've been so immersed in in taking action but also you know taking care of myself this is a different kind of hustle right now and yeah. um it's already august and we have four months left before the, the year ends yeah absolutely and you know I, I i think what you're doing is amazing because you know so many people especially in singapore because i go there and i do talks 
there. And I and I'm from LA, so whole like you know Asian culture sometimes can be very pressuring, you know, in mm-hmm. doing anything different than what you've been told to do. Uh, and people do, you know, there's not as many of um, th- that message in, in places like Singapore and Malaysia where, uh, you know, someone is saying to them, actually, you don't have to do it this way anymore. Times have changed. And we are living in a day and time uh, that's very different than our parents' age, you know, and mm-hmm. the opportunities are different. And that's why I'm so excited to have uh, to, to, to have someone like you in places like that, because you're bringing in this message from all the life learnings that you've already have, but you're also empowering really great people that may not have access sometimes to, let's say, North American coaches or, you know, the more, more self-help industry that is a, a bit more common there, where mm-hmm. Singapore, to say you're seeing a therapist, it's really embarrassing to even be saying it, you know? So the fact that you're making it okay and safe for people to talk about these topics about burnout and depression and high functioning anxiety sometimes, um, you know, is, is such a, a great conversation to have. Uh, now, I want to be able to share your work with people that are viewing this live stream. Um, so I'm going to show your little your your website there, dennybunny.co. But can you give us a, just a little something before we end uh, on what people will um, get when they read your blogs or sign up for your newsletters? What are you going to share with them to help make their lives and their version of success or how they get to success much more healthy and well? Uh, OK, so when you go to dennybunny.co, you will see this colorful website and all out all all about colors and making learning fun, you know. So what I do is I create content that uh, revolves around um, creativity, uh, creative entrepreneurship, about happiness and business. And I just want to say that um, my latest punchline is your life is your business. Uh, so, yeah. you know, you have to take good care of yourself. And uh, it's not about money, 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 uh, because true wealth exists in so many other forms. We just have to stretch our imagination imagination and we just have to get clear and understand and know ourselves better so that's, mm. that's the message i want to share and i want to thank you lydia for giving me this like my first live interview so uh tech issues Great. aside i time and um i wish everyone clarity um courage and peace and love and light Yes, thank you so very much for coming, Danny, and sharing your story, not just about your past and that, that you know, the, the, being so honest, actually, about your breakdown, which I think uh, will really help other people get a, a lot more honest and authentic about what they experience as well, uh, chasing after their version of success. So the conversation doesn't have to end here. Uh, Danny and I will be checking the comments <laughs> after when you watch the replay. Uh, if there's anything that we can help you with or give you any advice around, we are literally here. Uh, just tag us here and we will make sure to answer that for you. Um, and finally, if you are interested to uh, have the experience that Danny had at in, in uh, for the Bali retreat, which is your next big thing retreat, uh, please join us for the last retreat I'm running this year. Uh, I always love running retreats because first of all, I get to share my home in Bali and people can actually hear the roosters for real this time. They always hear it in the videos, but they never see it for real. Um, we are still having some spots open for your next big thing retreat and it's by invitation only and by application application only because we want to be able to curate, as uh, Danny mentioned, it's such an important thing to have uh, a very curated group, a very tight-knit council of people that are actually going to be your support guide, your feedback loop, your, um, you know, validation of circle of people that will help you build your dream business and build it in a way that that really plays up your strengths, you know, and really lets you shine your message across, which sometimes, you know, we can't see our own blind spots and we can't always see what we think we know, uh, and we do rely on other people. And you're right, entrepreneurship does not have to be a lonely road. Uh, we can absolutely do it together, and it's actually better if we do it together because you almost like 10 different brains, you know, in one. is a collective intelligence of amazing people coming together for a week to incubate in paradise. Um, thank you again, Danny, for joining me, and uh, this is an amazing conversation. Great, like, I-, I love your site. I love what you've been doing. You're one of my, like, star students that I always love to talk about. Um, um, and, and to find Danny again, I'm going to show you his um, uh, website, dannybunny.co. Please say hello to him. He always loves uh, visitors and uh, people commenting this blog. So.
For the next live stream, give us your topics. Uh, I'm always loving hearing what you want to learn about and what sort of guests you might want on me uh, on the show. Uh, so Danny's our first guest. Thank you, Danny. Um, and we are going to um, uh, do more live streams in the future. There'll be two live streams a week that I'll be doing from this page. So the more topics you give us, uh, the more I'm going to be able to give you some great nuggets of wisdom. Thanks again, Danny. Enjoy your day in Bangkok and see you later.